Okay, so you work for a FINRA firm. You've been working here for a while, and all of a sudden you get the email from compliance going, continuing ed time, that's so awesome, right? So let's go through the new rules, and maybe I'll see if I can figure out how to log in. Here's the deal of what you've been going through since you started. If you just took the exam, what it is. You take you get past your license. You have continuing ed on the second anniversary. What happens is on the second anniversary of your passing the exam, which is awesome, which because you watch my channel, you pass the fucking exam. Once the anniversary happens, you get a notification. You have four months to take continuing ed. It's super easy. It used to actually have to go down to Prometric. Now you can do it on your computer. You will have to open up a FinPro account. By the end of, I think they said the end of 2023, every single person, yeah, it has to be, every single person will ha who works for a FinRA firm will have to have a FinPro account, okay? That FinPro account is how you access your continuing ed and see all your licenses and all that other stuff. It's some good information on there. Now, right now, as of now, what happens is it's a second anniversary of your license passing, and then every third year after that. So second year, so it's your second year, then your fifth year, then your eighth, then your 11th, all that. And it was always based on your highest level of license, meaning if you have the Series 7, it's based on the 7. If you have the 24, it's based on the 24. If it's based on the 6, it's based on the 6. Whatever the highest license you have, that's what the continuing ed is based for. I think there was 101 for Series 7, 102 for, for 201 or something like that for um the series seven who cares what the numbers are but now if you start now you're not gonna have continuing ed till next year but they've changed everything up now starting january 21st january 21st january 1st 2023 god it's 2023 already what am i like 50 oh my god i'm gonna be 56 next year that's crazy okay starting next year you have to do continuing ed every single year but instead of having four months to do it, you have until the end of the year. You will have an entire um, year to do it. But And you'll also have to do it for every single license there is. So if you have the, like I, I have the, I have the three, the four, the seven, the nine, 10, the 14. I feel like I'm saying football, right? I have the 24, I have the 99, I have the 57, I have the 63, 66. 63, 60, the, the state ones are different. But from L so I will have to take three. Well, and the three is NFA, so let's throw that up. I have to take for the four, the seven, the nine, the ten, the twenty-four, the fifty-seven. Well, and the fourteen. So I'd have, I'm going to have to take eight exams next year. Okay, that's where that is. So I'm. So if you have four licenses, four tests, ten licenses, ten tests. But the good thing is, eh, good thing, they've lowered the price. So if you have the it used to be like. Not that it matters to you, but if you're at a firm where you have to pay for it, it used to be a couple hundred dollars to do every three years or three hundred, whatever it was. Now it's like 25 bucks each one. So if you only have the seven, the, you know, the SA and the seven, you're good. You have to take one exam. If you have the seven and 24, you take two. But you only have to take one every year. I don't know if it works out cheaper. If you have one license, the seven that they care about, then it, is, it works out to be exactly the same, but every year, if you have to pay for it. Now, if your firm pays for it, who the fuck cares, right? But again, you have to take it every year. So now here's the good part. If you, if your anniversary was after September 1st, September, October, yeah. If your anniversary to, of taking the exam was two years ago after September 1st, and your window to take the test opened in September, me, that means you have four months. That means your ending is after January 1st. You don't have to do this one. You can wait till next year. Okay, so again, if your if your window opens after September first, your four month window to take the exam opens after not the exam, the continuing ed after September first, your the window will close in January, which means you do not have to do this one. You can wait till twenty twenty three and then do it then. It's a brand new thing, but you will have to do. And by the way, doing it now doesn't exempt you from next year. So even if you do it now, you're gonna have to do it next year also. So it doesn't help. So again, we'll say this again, if your window to take the continuing ed opened in September 1st or later, you do not have to complete it because it's going to end in January and you won't be in your, all of a sudden it'll just, the one will fall off and the new one will show up and you'll have one year to do it. Now let's show how to get it started on a FinPro account. Okay. So let's say you either want to take the SIE exam 
or you want to take this um what is this series 63 65 or 66 and and do it yourself not through your firm that's one reason to use finpro the other reason is if you get called and you have to do continuing ed by the end of 2023 everyone will have a finpro account there's no way around it i think they're up to two-thirds of the people now by the end of 2023 everyone will have a finpro account because of the whole continuing ed thing that i told you about what's going to happen is you have to join finpro you have to create an account so you either going to get a link from your firm and they're going to say, here, go to this link for continuing ed or whatever, or you're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to have to go to finpro.finra.org and then click on the link. And here's what's going to happen. Let's let's roll the video. So this is what you're going to see. This is going to be the first screen that you see. You're going to see the login. And once you get in there, once you've grew all this, this is the only thing you're going to see. And then you go right in super easy. It'll save your password, all that crap. If you're part of, if you also have access to CRD, you can go to the single sign-on. So if you're a compliance officer or something, you may have some access to CRD. So you can go to single sign-on. So it's the same password and login for both FINRA, FINPRO and for your CRD. So you don't have to keep changing it around. And they've made it very easy. It used to be like, oh God, it used to be so hard to get your password reset and all that. It was like, you had to call them. Now it's just a button. It's also, it, you can work right through it. They verify you and everything. So let's say you don't have an account now. So now you're going to come and set up your account. Here you're at the website, and let's let's roll the tape. Okay, so you don't have an account. You're going to drop down and click the Create Account Here button. And that's going to take you to this screen where you have to read the privacy statement. You don't have to read it, but you should just to understand what's going on. And then you hit Agree. You have to acknowledge it because they won't let you go past that. Once you go that, here you go to this screen. This is your creating your profile, your last name, first name. The, you, you can Now they can create a user ID. It's better off to do it that way, but you can create your own. And if you already had one before, you have to just like mine is like my name plus five because I've done it five or six times through different firms. I have to do a new one every time, not FinPro, but my CRD. Then you have to see if your social security number, you fill out all this information, boom, like you normally would. Okay. Now, if you don't have a social security number, then you're going to use your CRD number and the date of birth. Okay. So if you don't have a social security number, click no, and then you're going to use your CRD number and then your date and then your date of birth to find you. You have to have a CRD number if you don't have a social security number. Now you're going to what you're going to do here is plug in your phone number and your cell phone. And then, remember, it has to be a cell. If it's a landline, it's not going to help you. Okay, you're going to get a text here with so you're going to get a one-time code that you're going to have to type in to to continue. So now we move on. We're going to also have, we put your personal email. Personal, remember, you're putting in your personal email, not your work email. You're, you have to do both, but the personal email is going to be the password reset. The reason they do that is because this FinPro account is yours forever. So once you set up the account, even when you leave, it's not going to matter because you're going to still have this account. And that's, that's a good thing. So your personal email is why you use there, and your business email is the other one. And see, look, here we go. You can access it even after you leave the firm. So now, once you do that, you set it up. You have see Michael Jackson one funny. Then you can then you check your personal email. You're going to activate your password and then move on. Let's do this. So this is the what the email is going to look like. It's going to go to your personal email. It's going to come from Finder.org. Maybe if you don't see it, check spam. You click the button. Boom. And remember, it's a time thing. You only have sixty minutes to do it. You click the link and then you activate your password. It sounds so stupid, right? Now you come back, you have your, your Michael Jackson one, you fill it in, you do, and then they're going to make you reset your password, right? So the temporary password they give you is going to have to be reset. So you have to put a new one in and then you can confirm, obviously, I always like to do the show because I always tech the fucking thing wrong. Okay. Boom. You reset your password. And then now you change it to what's the normal full on one. They have some rules on there. You have, like, you have to have a, um. I think you have to have a special letter, has to be a certain number of things, has to be a capital and not and not a common word. Like I always get nailed because I put in this very common word and it's just, it's a word that's not super common, but they think it is and it's just stupid. Okay, you're going to log in new, with the new password and let's walk us through the process here. You're going to have to, they're going to make you come up with security questions. Obviously, you're going to go up with three because they want to reset. Remember, they're using your personal email to set what I always do and you don't have to do it. Whenever I set it, I take a fucking picture. I take a screenshot, of, not a screenshot, but I take a picture of my phone of the question and the answers. This way you, you go, wait, what city did I say? Like they always, the one of those, where'd you meet your spouse? And I say Connecticut, but it's like, 
was it CT? Was it the forward Connecticut? Like, what's your favorite team or something like that? Say it's the Jets or something. Do I say New York Jets or Jets? By the way, those aren't the words I use, so don't try. Hacking my ass. Okay. Now they they're gonna identify they're gonna verify your identity. They want to make sure that it's you actually logging in. That's the whole thing where they ask your um they ask you like stuff like you know what which one of these is your address stuff like that. Okay. See, it's gonna you're gonna get a password passcode. They're gonna make sure it's you, and then they're gonna ask you some other questions. They, they when I did this, they had it. They asked me like, is this are you associated with this street or that street or this street or this account stuff like that? What car did you have? And here's here's your Finber account when you're done. So look, you can here's your employment history, all your stuff. You can enroll in the SIE stuff like that. I think you can probably yeah try to push yourself in. You can see your disclosures, what will be on broker check. It's a really good thing to have. They really want everyone to have this. So this is a good way to see all your registration, any exams that you're waiting for, exam history. And I think this is where you can apply somewhere in here. It's for the SIE. And this is kind of where you want to guarantee, you want to make sure that everything on there is correct. And if it's not, you get to correct it. It used to be very, very hard to get your password. Now they made it very smooth and it's really easy to do. If you have a question, super great people. They're, they actually, they are really super helpful. Whenever I call FINRA, I always expect to get not shitty people. They're all super helpful. They walked me through a problem I had the other day. They sat on the phone with me for 45 minutes walking me through. FINRA is not the FINRA from 10 years ago. I mean, look, they're still the regulator. You know, you're still going to screw up. They're going to come after you. But they're much, much more helpful than they used to be. And there you go. FINRA.org, FINPRO. Okay. So now you've gotten the email that you have to do continuing ed. You log into the FINPRO. This is what you're going to see. Boom. Launch CE online. Make sure that you're, um, again, it's going to be another browser. You click it in. And then you just work your way through this shit. You're, you're going to have to figure out, fill out some stuff. You select your appropriate function, and then they're going to go. The 101 is a regulatory. So I think it's 201 is the um, 7. Remember something. Continuing ed is not so bad. It's just modules and little stories. You've probably done them at work. You just have to finish each one. And I think they say you can't go through too fast. If it goes too fast, they kind of slow you down. And if you don't pa get a, a passing score on it, they give you another scenario on the same topic. Just different stuff. Um, again, they have the modules, the modules A through D. And this is what right now it's good. You're only doing it for the one license. Starting next year, you're going to have it for every license you have. Boom. And then there you go. See, look, here we go. 201 should be for the Series 24. That's always your highest license. And then once you finish it, you get a congratulations. I always say after you're done, whether you have to or not, I always try to print out the screen. You don't have to because it'll show, but I'm a big fan of printing out the screen. And then you need to see this. You need to see all of them completed. Remember, there's more than one. You have to make sure you do all of them. See, they have little names. Backs checks the facts, okay? And then you're going to go back here, see the word complete. I would take a screenshot, and there you go. That's what happens with the continuing ed. Okay, so remember, recap, real quick recap. You need to have a FinPro account. Starting, so if your registration window ends anytime after January 1st, you do not need to do continuing this year. You can if you want. I've spoken to FINRA at multiple conferences. They all said the same thing. If your window ends at January 1st or after, you will not have to do this year's. Just wait till next year's. If your firm makes you do it, that's fine. It is what it is. Now, remember, this is regulatory continuing ed. That's not the same as that crap that your, your firm makes you do every fucking three months, okay? That's your own, and you have to do that, okay? This is changing. Boom, it's going to be one. It's going to be you have a full year starting on January 1st to finish it. So if by the end, by the middle of this year of next year, if you haven't gotten notification that you're going to start it, you should reach out because everyone has to start next year. 2023 starts the every year kind of thing. And remember, it's going to be every single year. Or you become CE inactive, and we know on the 7, if you become CE inactive, you can't collect commissions and make money. Boom. Okay, have a good night. If you like this stuff, please hit like, subscribe, and share. And share this shit, baby. And don't forget, I Tuesday and Thursday nights, I have a live Q&A free for everyone. Just come in and ask questions.